guess not. It's all right, Clem. There's not much damage. Looks like an accident. Well, I have to make a report. That's my duty, you know. Oh, well, uh, Doc, hold this, will you please? Well, boys, looks like you're in a little jam here, huh? Well, I'm sorry, but I have to make a report, you know. Oh, let me have that pencil, will you? Oh, you got a little piece of paper, anything to write on? Any old thing? Sure. Thanks. Oh, you're from Chicago, huh? Yeah. Hey, Steve, they're all here but one. The boss will make me pay for that. I think we can settle this without any difficulty. Boy, look at that head of lettuce. What about these broken crates? They gotta be fixed. Well, here's ten dollars. You think that'll be enough? Ten bucks? Well, I should say. Yes, sir. It's all right with me, boss. Ten dollars? For one chicken? Well, looks like I don't have to make a report. Hey. Oh. <laughs> ah, thanks very much, Captain. Captain? Oh, that's all right, son. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I guess the sun got to it. <laughs> well, I like the star show better anyway. Hey, Tom! Hi, Roy Davis. What are you doing around here? I was just passing through. Meet Dr. Christian, Tom Stewart. We went to college together, Doc. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Say, Tom, I haven't seen you in, uh... Years. That's right. Well, I guess you don't need a doctor around here. Oh, I'm sorry, doctor. I'll try to do better next time. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, pal, they certainly gave that fender a sweet kiss. Yes, for the sound of it, I thought I'd ripped it off. I got a brother, Charlie, with a garage right down the street. He'll fix it up for you like that. Well, thanks. I think I better wait till I get to Center City. Center City? Ooh. What's your hurry? Why don't you stay a while? Pay us a little visit. Oh, uh, business. I had an appointment. I'm late now. Well, that's fine. You can call him and tell him you'll be a couple of days late. A couple of days? I, I couldn't. Why not? Take a little rest, Tom. It'll do you good. Maybe you're right at that. Atta boy. Fine, fine. I'll drive this heap right down to my brother Charlie's garage. I think I better check into the hotel first. The hotel? Great. I'll drop your bags off there. Boy, you're gonna love that little hotel. Oh, yes. My Aunt Tilly owns it. <laughs> That's that. Come on over to my store. Oh, uh, do you think you can run this outfit? What, this thing here? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> my sister's husband, that's my brother-in-law, you know. He owns the agency for these things in Center City. All right, Major. Major? Thanks, pal. Thanks for the promotion. Good guy. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's one of those newfangled gear shifts. Hey! Hey, bud! Keep moving, will you? I want to back out of here. Is that the same medicine, Dr. Christian? Yes. Vitamin B1 is very good for the nerves. But you should know. <laughs> this is your third bottle. I hope you're taking it right, Lily. Well, I... She's um... giving it to the petunias. Petunias? Not all of it, most of the doctor. She was taking the medicine one day in the garden, and some of it spilled on the flowers. And those petunias grew bigger than any of the others. Close. Vitamin B1 is very good for flowers, too. yourself. Quiet, you child. Quiet, you monster. But this can't 
that he just might have been the prize winner. We're going in the flower exhibit. Without petunias. Petunias. Well, what do I do with this? Well, it looks like it might make a very tasty meal. After ruining my cake, I wouldn't cook them. Oh, of course. Here. You take it. Oh, I couldn't. You cook it and I'll come over and help you eat it. Oh, in that case, <gasps> we'll make fried chicken for lunch today. Fried chicken? I'll be there. Oh, thank you for the prescription, Doctor. And the chicken. <laughs> oh. You won't need me for a couple of hours, Dr. Christian, will you? Won't I? Well, you've taken care of all the patients, and I didn't think... Go ahead, Judy. Roy's probably tearing his hair out waiting for you. You know Roy better than that. <laughs> We're just going for a ride in the country. That dress looks awfully thin. Do you like it? Very pretty. Well, that's all that matters. And if I do catch cold, maybe you can recommend a good doctor. Signal. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-two, ninety-six, eighty-seven. <laughs> Something I can do for you, Mrs. Gaddle? Yes, Roy. A bar of chocolate. I better run along. No, no, Tom. Don't go away. Uh, this chocolate, Mrs. Gaddle? No, a five cent bar. Thank you. Uh, when you left college, you were going into the bond business. Oh, I tried that for a while, but I quit. I build hotels for a living now. Hotels? Yes. Anything else, Mrs. Gaddle? Let me think now. Well, that ought to be an interesting business, Tom. Keeps me on the move. I was on my way to Center City. They say there's a pretty good building site there. Say, we've got everything that town's got and more. <laughs> Why don't you build it in River's End? Might not be a bad idea. Have you made up your mind, Miss Gaddle? Oh, could I borrow some wrapping paper? Certainly. Will that be enough? Just a little more. Fine. Anything else? I can't think of a thing. That'll be 13 cents. Oh, dear, I've only got nine. Put the rest on my bill, Roy. Okay. You sure made a lot on that deal. <laughs> no kidding, Tom. This would be an ideal place for a hotel. I'd like to take a look around. Ready to go, Roy? Oh, hello, Judy. Uh, uh, this is Miss Judy Price, Tom Stewart. Well, how do you do? I'm very happy to meet you, Miss Price. Tom is visiting us for a while. How nice. I thought we could take him with us this afternoon and show him some of the country around here. Yes, certainly. Oh, please, I, I don't want to interfere with any of your plans. Oh, no, not at all, Tom. Uh, we were just going driving. Judy won't mind, will you? Of course not. But watch the front. I'll be gone for a little while. All right, Roy. Gosh, I forgot I haven't got my car. Mine's in the garage. Well, I guess we can use mine. Well, that's fine, Judy. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, marvelous. Just dandy. Well, Dr. Christian will be here any minute. Does seem a shame. She's such a cute little thing, isn't she? But you invited the doctor. Oh, dear. I wonder if Dr. Christian would chloroform her. She's a he. Are you sure? I heard her crow. I wonder if he knows. Oh, fiddlesticks. Give me that. Doesn't seem like a very fat chicken. No, very thin. Probably all bones. We couldn't give Dr. Christian bones for lunch. That would be terrible. Hello, girls. Good. Aren't, you, aren't you a little early, Dr. Christian? Yeah. Uh, about our luncheon appointment, I don't think I'll be able to stay. Uh, oh, can't you? Uh, I, I have to see a patient. Oh, we're so sorry. I'll tell you what. You fatten up that chicken, and we'll make it another time. Oh, huh? That'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, bye. Goodbye. 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 <laughs>
Let's call him Oscar Lex. Good morning, Mr. Browning. Good morning, Mrs. Gaddle. Anything I can do for you this morning? Nice apple. Yeah, 20 cents a pound. And strawberries. 15 cents a box, two for a quarter. I just got them in fresh this morning. Lovely. I just love strawberries. So I noticed. Why don't you uh, try the watermelon? Thank you, Mr. Browning. <laughs> the... Delicious. Oh. Mm. No, I really don't think I need a thing this morning. Parsley. Have you any parsley, Mr. Browning? There's no charge for parsley. I know that, Mr. Browning. Or oh, string. Could I borrow some string, Mr. Browning? By the way, you know that young man that had the accident this morning? He's going to build a hotel here. We've got a hotel. Oh, this is going to be a resort. A million dollar thing. I heard him telling Roy in his store. Oh, thank you, Mr. Browning. He's looking for a property. Uh, oh, Mrs. Daddle! You said he wanted to buy some property? Definitely. Well, I have property. Oh, lots and lots of it. You mean that 10 acres out by the city dump? Oh, uh, well, look, uh, Mrs. Gatton, you haven't told anybody about this, have you? Just between us two. Good. Oh, oh wait a minute. I got something for you. Oh. Thank you, Mrs. Gatton, have you told George our little secret? You know, about the new hotel? Two pounds of sugar, Joa. A quart of milk. How much of the pizza? <laughs> Judy, I wouldn't say anything about the hotel or anything. You know how things get around. Don't worry about that. In fact, I've had very little to say all afternoon. How do you do? Lovely. You're quite welcome. Swell guy, isn't he? Wonderful. Well, what's the matter, Judy? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've had a simply marvelous afternoon. Just, uh, moseying around. I got a little date here with, uh, <coughs> Mr. Stewart. Stewart? Yeah. What do you want to see Stewart for? Why, uh, Miss Gaddle told me all about it. Am I glad I met that girl? Yes, sir. You know, if I hadn't met her, I wouldn't have been able to sell my Aunt Tilly's property. Sell your Aunt Tilly's property to Stewart? Oh, no, you're not. I'm going to sell him this property. You are? Oh, is yeah. that so? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. What do you think he's going to do? Spend a million dollars up... And that dump heap of your Aunt Tilly's to put a hotel? Dump heap of my Aunt Tilly's, is that so? What do you think you got here? A pond lily, a lily pond? Is this a sunken garden? Well, you can't sell it to him. Who said I can't? I said that. I you won't do. let you sell it. You won't. No, I won't let you sell it. You had that property in your family for 200 years. Yes, sir, 212 years. 212 years, just think of that. The Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Civil War, they fought and they bled for it. They came out here in covered wagons, they got down on their hands and knees, they broke rock, and they pulled out brush. And they fought the Indians. Yes, sir, and they fought the Indians. For what? For what? 
so that you and your Aunt Tilly could have that gorgeous, beautiful uh, place up there. George, you got me. And you won't say anything to Stuart about it? George, I give you my word. I won't sell my Aunt Tilly's property to anybody. Good. But if you sell your property, I want 10%. Why, you dirty double-crossing rat! Now, wait a minute, George. Wait a minute, now. Wait a minute. You better make up your mind. I wouldn't do it if Here he comes now. I wouldn't give you a shit. What do you say? Here he comes now. Tell me what I give you. All right, Mr. Stewart. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Ten. Mr. Stewart. Ten. Okay. Wow. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Good morning. Well, I guess you had the first appointment, George. Yeah, wait a minute. What about me? Yeah, huh? Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, he did have the first appointment. Uh, right this way, Mr. Stewart. Yeah. Oh, uh, Roy. Yes, sir, Mr. Stewart. Trees, beautiful trees, thousands of them. You can grow anything on this land. Plenty of rain. You said it. Last winter, we were almost swamped. I, I, I mean, uh, over the hill, by Aunt Tilly's property. Oh, you mean it's marshy over there? Well, not exactly marshy, but it is a little bit misty. Yeah, but not here. This property's suitable for anything. Sun all day, cool nights, a veritable paradise. Just what I've been looking for. How much do you want for it? What? How much do you want for it? Oh, well, uh, I paid $50 an acre for it, and uh, I think I'm entitled to a little profit. That's fair enough. Yeah. We'll take 40 It's a deal. It's lovely, isn't it? A place like that will put River's End on the map. My brother Joe has the contract for all the hardware. They're spreading the building business all over town. <laughs> Bud. Oh, hello, Judy. Never mind, Bud. Uh, about last night, Judy, I'm sorry I had to break our date, but Tom wanted me to go over these bills for him. Must be rather difficult acting as agent for a building concern and running a drugstore and everything. Keeps me hopping all right, but last night I just couldn't make it, Judy. You needn't worry about me. I found something else to do. Judy! How about Wednesday night? We could go to the show. Oh, I wouldn't think of taking you away from your business. Oh, Judy, you know this is my big opportunity. I can't mess it up. You've broken every date we've had for the past three weeks. I can't help it, Judy. This is my only chance to make some money. Tom's giving me a commission. And with money, I can, well, I, I can do a lot. And anyway, I've got a lot to thank Tom for. He's been swell. I guess you have been pretty busy. And how about Wednesday? All right. Now, if anything happens that, I mean business, of course, I'll call you in the morning. Let's forget all about Wednesday. If you don't know now, you never will. Oh, Judy. Well, good morning, Miss Price. Good morning. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Have you looked over all those bills yet? Uh, it'll take about a half an hour, Tom. Fine. I'll see you later. They tell me there's some great fishing around these parts. Do you ever go? Oh, once in a while with Roy, when Dr. Christian can spare me. I used to do a lot of fishing back east. It's a great sport. Yes, I like it. Fine. How about making a date for tomorrow? You could show me all the good spots. I thought you were too busy working to take time out. Oh, all the details are arranged. The actual work starts tomorrow, but they won't need me. Oh, they won't? I've got the whole day planned. We'll fish for a couple of hours in the morning. We'll go over to Center City for lunch. In the afternoon, we'll take a drive. In the evening, we'll have dinner and go dancing. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought you wanted to go fishing. You'd better take Dr. Christian or Roy. Now, wouldn't I look funny dancing with Dr. Christian or Roy? <laughs> You're impossible. Well, Roy can't go. He has to look at some specifications. And Dr. Christian will be busy. Well, somebody will get a sore throat or something. <laughs> You've got everything all figured out, haven't you? Right. Oh, good morning, Mr. Stewart. Good morning, Mrs. Hastings. We've got the whole town all excited over that new hotel of yours. Well, I hope it lives up to their expectation. If it's anything like the picture, it will. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Stewart, um, how's the food at your hotel? Uh, the, the food? I hear it's perfectly dreadful. Well, I've had better. You like cake? Well, who doesn't? Uh, will you come inside with me and I'll let you taste some of mine? I'll be glad to. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, that was delicious. Mm, thank you. We're having a bazaar next week, and I'm entering the baking contest. Your cake will win in a walk. I think I'm a pretty good judge, too. You see, my mother was Westchester County champion in 1916. Really? Have another piece. Well, Mrs. Hastings, I'll, I'll make you a proposition. If I can walk as far as that door, I'll accept your offer. <laughs> No sale. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, good morning. I, Mrs. Hastings and I were yeah, just... Uh, I know. Mrs. Hastings found a new cake tester. Well, you don't know what you've been missing, Doctor. Ah, uh, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the official cake tester now. And a job very much to my liking. You know, Clem used to hold that position. Clem? Mm -hmm. Until he had a falling out with Mrs. Hastings. About what? Well, it seems that Clem tried to tell Mrs. Hastings how to make the cakes. Oh, I'd never make that mistake. She can bake them. I'll eat them. Oh, you're smarter than Clem. Oh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Uh, now, <laughs> how about that fishing trip? All right. Tomorrow morning at 7? Fine. Good. Thanks very much, Mrs. Hastings. You're welcome. Come back again. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. See you in the morning. Bye-bye. Fishing, eh? Uh-huh. Dr. Christian, why don't you come along? Everybody's pretty healthy this week. Oh, good. Seems to me that for busy executive young Stuart has plenty of time on his hands. Now, don't go thinking things like that. He's a very nice young fellow. And an excellent judge of cake. <laughs> him. Hey, where's Mr. Stewart? He's not in. I'm sorry. Where is he? I gotta see him. What do you think this is? Television? Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, it's you. Where's Mr. Stewart? Don't yell. I can hear you. I don't know where he is. Well, where can I look? It's important. Ask Roy. Maybe he knows. Hey, we struck oil on the hotel property. Oil? Oil? Sounds kind of funny to me. I, I never heard of oil around here. But I'm telling you, I had my hands full of the stuff. Hey, we got to find Mr. Stewart. Well, come on. And maybe he's with George Browning. Boy, that'd be swell to have an oil field around here. George! Where's Tom? How do I know where he is? We gotta see him. They struck oil on a hotel site. What? Oil? Yeah, globs of it, right in the ground, black as soot. I think they went fishing. Let's ask Miss Hastings. Well, wait a minute, I'll go with you. They paid me forty dollars an acre for that. Here they are now. <laughs> We've been waiting for you, Doc. Hey, they struck oil. Hold on, George. I'll explain it. Well, what's the matter? Why all the excitement? They've been bouncing up and down like a couple of crazy <laughs> men all afternoon. They found oil on the hotel site this morning. They what? It was practically on top of the ground. Why, that's unbelievable. Uh, don't go playing games with me, young fella. You know it was there all the time. Oil? In River Sand? Look, I got samples of it down in my store. I went and got it myself, didn't I? Yeah. You knew there was oil there. Well, maybe we better go and take a look. Yeah. Come on. I'll show you. Fry him. Plenty of bottles. I can't understand it. Well, I can. First you found out what was on that property, and then you bought it. 
You can't fool me, young fella. Now, won't let you get away with it. Let me assure you, Mr. Browning, that I bought that property because it was well suited to the type of building I wanted to put up. It's beautiful land. That's the only reason I bought it. Beautiful. It's been a white elephant on my hands for 10 years. It's ugly, and you know it. Is that right? Judging by the speech you made when you sold it to me, you didn't think so. I'm sorry, Doctor. It certainly looks like oil. And if it is, it would be foolish to build a resort on such valuable land. All right, if you don't want to build a hotel out there, I'll buy it back and I'll dig a well on it. It's not as easy as all that. Don't forget the hotel corporation owns that land. There must be some way to get around that. If there's oil there, the people should have a chance to make something out of it. I don't know. I'll have to take that up with our president, Mr. D.B. Vander. He's a pretty tough businessman. Well, why don't you get in touch with him and find out? Well, I could. I could talk to him right now. He's probably still in his office. Well, come on, let's get going. Sit right down. Here you are. Is it all right to call Chicago, Mr. Browning? What? Chicago. Chicago? Yes. Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> sure. Go right ahead. Hello. Hello. Long distance, please. Long distance. I want to call Chicago, please. Harrison, 8460. I'd like to let you folks in on this, but if he ever finds out there's enough oil in that land to be discovered from the topsoil, he'll never share it. Hello. I want to speak to D.B., please. This is Tom Stewart. Just a minute, please. Telephone, D.B. Tom Stewart. Oh, thank you, my good man. I can't make up my mind between Do It and Steve Ang. Make it a dollar on Steve Ang. Okay, where's the buck? Well, can't you trust me for a dollar? Now, you know the rules of the house. I owe you a dime. What's keeping him so long? This call has to go through about six secretaries. He's one of the wealthiest men in Chicago. You couldn't have charged to the other end, could you? I mean... <laughs> Hello. Hello, D.B. Yes, I'm in Rivers End. How are all the suckers up there? Coming along very well. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. They're off. As they go past the... Hold everything. Hand, it's T-Bang on top. Lover come back is second to length. Johnny Boy is third ahead. And do it is coming up on the rail. He's taking it up with the board of directors. It's T-Bang and Lover come back. It's Lover come back. Yes, sir. And Lover come back wins it. Steve-Ang is second, and Johnny Boy is third. How do you like a dog like that? Leads all the way, then folds like an accordion four lengths short of the wire. Don't worry, D.B. We won't lose anything on this deal. All right, I'll call you tonight. Goodbye. He says yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not going to sell stock. We're going to make this a real partnership. Share. Yes. I like us. Come on, Gertrude. Let's invest our dowry. I should say not. Suppose we get a man. Suppose we get married someday. Maybe it's a good investment. Hold on, folks. I know this is the wrong time to say anything. You people are so excited. But don't you think we'd better be sure that there is oil before making any investments? Well, how could you be any more sure? There it is, right there on the table. We don't know much about oil around here. And maybe if we could get a geologist to kind of check up, we'll be safe all around. Certainly. <laughs> Dr. Christian's perfectly right. I was a fool not to have thought of it myself. I'll call a geologist tonight. How does that sound to you, Dr. Christian? Oh, fine. Fine. Well, I guess that's all there is to that, boys. Congratulations, Tom. Well, don't congratulate me. I think we're all very lucky. Oh, it isn't all luck. You're just what this town needed. Someone energetic and enterprising enough to wake it up. Oil occurs in sedimentary rocks of shallow marine, estuarine and deltaic origin. I.E. 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 Beds formed along seashores in inland bays and at river mouths. You know, Tom, this is quite interesting. Get rid of that. They're waiting for us. Oh, I'm glad 
and see you. Hmm? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Emerson, our geologist. How do you do? How do you do? Charm. Happy to meet you all. I was extremely fortunate in being able to make the train. So busy, you know. Yeah. I was interested in uh, knowing that... Certainly. I hate to rush you, Mr. Emerson. You want to know what your findings are. Of course, of course. Let us proceed. Very promising, I must say. But naturally, I'm speaking figuratively. I brought my equipment along, and I'll require a room in which to make further examinations. I've already made arrangements for that, Mr. Emerson. I've engaged one at the hotel for you. Huh? I think Mr. Emerson should get to work right away. Well, yes, so do I. What's holding you up? Let's... Well, of course, you gentlemen realize that if there is oil here, the sinking of a well will require considerable capital. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. We got plenty of money in this town. Enough to sink six wells. Once you say the good word, Mr. Emerson, and the people of Rivers End become financially interested, I'm going to catch the first train to Chicago and arrange for drilling apparatus and competent engineers to handle it. A very good plan, if I may say so, Mr. Stewart. But then again, we've got to be sure there is oil here, don't we? Oil? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. well, shall we take you back now? Yes, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's bad. Thank you. Song Circle meets at 8 o'clock. All right, Mrs. Hastings. And Roy, don't forget to tell Mr. Stewart that I've saved up $80. And I don't want to be left out. <laughs> I won't forget, Mrs. Hastings. Good night. Everybody is certainly getting excited around here. Even Mrs. Hastings. Well, I'd say we've got something to get excited about. I know, but they're going to invest their life savings. There's nothing to worry about, Doctor. Tom's not taking any money until the geologist says it's definite. Yes. Long distance, please. Uh, Mr. Harvey Manning, 22 Oak Street, Center City. Yes. Uh, please connect me with his number. You know, Roy, to a town like ours, this could be a very serious thing. It's like a snowball getting bigger and bigger as it rolls downhill. Hello? Hello, Harvey. This is Paul Christian. Fine, how are you? No, uh, no, this is a professional call. Uh, I'd like you to come here and make some tests on some land. They say there's oil. As soon as you possibly can, it's, it's quite important. You'll drive down? Fine. Tomorrow morning? Thanks, Harvey. You're certainly a real friend. <laughs> Goodbye. Another geologist? What for? When a doctor diagnoses a case, and he isn't positive, he calls in a specialist, doesn't he? I guess so. Two geologists will make more or less a sure thing of it. If they agree. But anyway, don't invest your money until we find out. <laughs> All right. Well, I gotta be going, Doc. Judy around? No, she went over to the Purities, delivering some more medicine. <laughs> Hello, Clem. Hello, Doc. Oh, there's my man. Roy, I've been looking all over town for you. It's about the oil wells. You know, I got a cousin Chester in Milwaukee, and he makes drills. He makes little drills, big drills, all kinds of drills. Now, listen, if you're going to drill for oil, you got to use drills. So I thought you might use the drills that are made by my cousin Chester, the best drills in Milwaukee. I'll speak to Tom about it. Well, uh, look, it isn't that my cousin needs the business, but after all, you know, uh, Chester is my cousin. I won't forget. Ah, Doc. I got I had a tough day. I still been on duty all day long. My dogs are killing me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, gotta go home and get something to eat now. And boy, how I dread it. Mm. You know, my wife, best little woman in the world, but oh, she's a terrible cook, a terrible cook. Yesterday, I brought home a juicy tenderloin steak about that thick. You know what she did with it? She boiled it. <laughs> oh, boy, I haven't had a square meal for about a week. My wife certainly is a pretty tough cook. Well, well, <clears throat> see you later, Doc. Come on, Clem. I'm a little hungry myself. 
That's right, the icebox. <clears throat> You're not kidding, are you? No fuss, Doc. You know, any old thing will do. Just a little snack, you know. Ah! Doc! <laughs> Come here. <laughs> do you see what I see? Mm, it certainly looks good. Mrs. Hastings must have left this out for me. For us? <laughs> uh, wait till I get a knife and a couple of plates. Plates? Don't bother about plates, Doc. <laughs> We're going to eat this one right out of the trough. Oh, boy. There we are. Say, Doc, you sure it's all right if we eat this now? You're not expecting company or anything like that, no, are you? Oh, no, 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 don't worry. We can eat the whole thing. Say, if you want to please Mrs. Hastings, eat hearty. You know, that woman has a heart of gold. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> no, Doc. That's about the best cake I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> Maybe Mrs. Hastings should have entered that one the contest. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Listen to this. Mm -hmm. This is the contest cake. Please don't touch. Mrs. Hastings. Contest cake? Well, it's in no shape for a contest now. I gave it an awful beating. Oh, but, but this is terrible. She's been baking cakes for weeks getting ready for the contest. She's been waiting 15 years and this had to happen. Hmm, Doc, I think that you and me better join the Foreign Legion. If we can find a recipe, we'll bake another cake to replace it. That's it, Doc. Why, sure, we'll bake another one. Do you know how? No, but... I can scramble eggs. Well, I make a pretty good stew myself. Oh, the best chefs are men, aren't they? Mm -hmm. At least we can follow the recipe. Why, sure. You know, Doc, I come from a long line of chefs. <laughs> Why, my old man was a chef for years. Doc, we'll make a prize winner. Uh, I don't know about a prize winner. Well, Doc, there we are. Butter, eggs, milk, cream. There's the whole works. Uh, everything but the baking powder. Well, I'll tell you, I'll look around through this side of the room and you look through the drawers. Oh, we did that once. Let's work until we get to that part of the recipe. Huh. What does it say first? Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's see. Oh, boy, this writing is terrible. You know, she writes worse than my wife. Let me see. Cream in a half a cup of butter. Half a cup of butter. All right. Let's have a cup of butter. But uh, how do we cream it? Yeah, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's... Cream and a half a cup of butter. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's melt the butter over the fire. Why not? I'll melt. What comes next? A cup of sugar. Hey, yeah, Doc. Now what do we do with it? Well, maybe you better drop it in here with the butter. <laughs> Doc, you know you're a genius. Yeah, we'll melt them both together, and that saves time. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> Whoever said this cake making was hard? Ha! It's a cinch. <laughs> ah, there's only one thing that worries me. Mrs. Hastings wanted to win this contest. Ha! <laughs> Don't worry, she will. Say, Doc, I've got a pretty good idea. Now, let's make this cake just for the other judges. How do you mean? Well, now, look. George and Prudence Benny like sweet stuff, don't they? So we'll just put in another cup of sugar. Well, I don't... Work. We'll make this cake just for them. We'll put in two cups. Well, I, I hope you know what you're doing. Don't worry now, Doc. Don't worry. Now, let me see. <clears throat> now, chocolate. Three chunks. Yeah, here they are. That's it. You know, Doc, I love chocolate. I... Doc. Something wrong with this. Oh. Yeah, it's bitter. Taste it. It is, isn't it? Now, you see, I'd make a very, very good cook. I can tell just by the taste. See, that must be spoiled. Throw it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, what are we going to use? Ah, oh, now, don't worry. Don't worry. Here we are. <laughs> a chocolate bar. Sure. A thing. And a dandy. <laughs> Full of nuts. <laughs> Wait a minute. Better take the tin foil off first. Uh -huh. That's a good idea. <laughs> now, now it says, the yolks of two eggs well beaten. Only the yolks? What happens to the whites? I don't know. You know, these silly women wasting money like that, because right down here it says, the whites of two eggs well beaten. Oh, I don't see why we shouldn't beat them together and save time. Why, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Isn't that just like a woman? Trying to make a mystery out of a simple little thing like beating up two eggs? Yeah, it... Say, Doc, wait a minute. Piece of shell in there. Well, not very sanitary, perhaps, but efficient. 
Doc, you know, <clears throat> those two eggs worry me. Yeah. They're all right. No, 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 not that. I, I mean, I, I don't see how anybody can make a good cake with just two eggs. No, the cake recipe says that the... Uh... Well, never mind about the recipe. Whoever made up that recipe certainly was cheap. Yes, sir, but there's not going to be anything cheap about this. I'm just going to bust in a couple of more eggs. Well, everything is in and out but the baking powder. Well, <coughs> I surrender. I can't find it. I've looked all over. Let's skip it, Doc. We don't need any baking powder. Oh, but the cake won't rise. Oh, uh, yeah, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, hey, Doc, my father didn't work in a bakery shop for nothing. Look what I found. Yeast. Oh, but I don't think anybody puts yeast in cake. Why not? Yeast makes bread rise. Why not cake? We'll just put in a little, just to give it a little, a little. Mm. Now, put in a slow oven and bake for 30 minutes. The operation is a huge success. Mother and child both doing nicely. There you are, Doc. A masterpiece. That's pretty all right. I wonder how it'll taste. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Doc, we have made a cake that's going to make history. That's what I'm afraid of. It's certainly nice of you, Harvey, to drop all your work and come out here just for a friend. Not at all, Paul. I can understand how you feel. How long do you think it'll take to make your analysis? Now that I've got this, I shall be through at 3 o'clock. I'll meet you at the bazaar. Thanks a lot. Oil occurs in sedimentary rocks of shallow marine. Estuarine and deltaic origin. I.e., beds form along seashores and inland... Don't recite it. It isn't Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now, Tom, you're talking to an old-time barker. It'll come out slicker than the oil we're trying to... Uh-oh. What time is it, Jack? 2.15. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Oh, hello, Roy. All set for the bazaar? If Mr. Riverson is ready. I think I have everything here. Good. I'm Mr. Manning. Dr. Christian reserved a room for... That me. must be the geologist Dr. Christian sent for. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say geologist? Yes, he called him last night to... Well, you know how Dr. Christian is. He wants to be absolutely certain before the people invest their money. He's an old friend of his. I see. Uh, uh, Roy, I think you'd better go on to the bazaar. I have a couple of things I want to talk over with Mr. Emerson. Yes, I think you'd better. Uh, there's just one thing more I want to do, you know, to be absolutely sure. Yes. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Awfully <laughs> stupid of me. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir, so sorry. I'm sorry that we can't all go together, but we won't be late. Pardon me, could you tell me the time? I never carry a watch. Mm -hmm. Having any trouble with pickpockets around here? No. That is, not until now. My mother gave me that watch. Come along, you. Why, this is ridiculous. I'm no thief. I'm a friend of Dr. Christian's. He'll explain everything. All right, you can call him from the station. M my bag. All right, come on, come on. Come on. I come demand on. my right under right, right, constitution. All right, all right. The old watch gag. Don't forget, we have to pick up the Purdy sisters. Mm hmm. And you will drive carefully, won't you, Doctor? Yes, very carefully. No answer. 
Because he left for the bazaar. But you'll have to reach him. I can't be kept here like this. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? The charge is robbery. But I didn't do it. Find Dr. Christian. He'll explain everything. Yeah, I know. Go ahead, Jack. Show him suite number one. Come on. My bag. My specimens. Oh, let him have them. Nothing but a microscope, dirt, chemicals. Hi, Uncle Jeff. Hello, Clem. You can take over now. The wife's waiting for me. Yes, sir. You're leaving it in safe hands. Sure. There's a prisoner in number one, but don't let him bother you. Don't worry. <laughs> he ain't gonna bother me. And Clem. Huh? Oh. I don't want you playing around with that radio equipment. Remember? Who, me? Oh, why, Uncle Jeff, honest. I wouldn't touch the thing. You think this will be big enough for the petunias, Gertrude? Certainly. We're only taking four or five of the very nicest. Look what he's done. After all our work, they are ruined. Oh, dear. And all that medicine. What are we going to do now? What we should have done weeks ago. You bad thing. Oh, Gertrude, not that. Not I'll show him our, our petunias. I'll show him. After all my work, please, Gertrude, think it over. Oscar's a pet. <laughs> my dear sister, oh, come back to me. Abby, Gertrude. No. Where am I? Well, you're still in River's End. What happened? She shot at the chicken. And the gun knocked her over. Is she really all right, Doctor? Of course I'm all right. Where's that gun? Now, hold on, Gertrude. What's all the trouble? Trouble? Oscar ate all our petunias. It's not so terrible. Not so terrible. We were going to win a prize with them. Say, he certainly turned out to be a beautiful specimen. Why don't you enter him in the poultry show? Of course. Then we won't have to kill him. And we'll win a prize. Oscar. Oscar. Chick, chick, chick. Chick. Get up, sir. Get up, sir. Come on. <laughs> We like hot shots around here, big boy. Yeah, come on, come on, George. Come on in, big boy. Shoot his wife, guy. Yeah, one the other. There you go, George. Watch him. Ah, you can do better than that. Come on, big boy. Knock him down. Hurry, go, 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 hurry,
that eye on him, boy. Good goes once again. Watch it, boys. Watch it. He's winding up. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, he's oh, he's oh, what, a, what a pitcher. Oh, what a lucky boy. <laughs> It's a big day, Dr. Christian. A big day for everybody. Tom and Mr. Emerson will be along any minute now. Has he made his analysis yet? Oh, I think so. He said he'd be right out. Hello, Judy. Hello. Why don't you two take a walk around, huh? Yeah, how about it? Let's take a look at the exhibit. All right. Hey, boy. Hey, hey. Guard. Come on. Come on. Now come down. Come on. Watch him, boys. Watch that arm. Watch him. Here he goes. Here he goes. Hey! Oh, knock him down. Try it again, big boy. Come on, Pete. Come on, big strong boy. Come on, three more for you now. Yeah, come on, come on. Hello, Mr. Stewart. What's the good word? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to let Mr. Emerson tell you. Is it a gusher? Are we going to make a million dollars? <laughs> Just be patient, ladies. Now, if we can get them all together, I'll make a little announcement. Sure. Come right over here. I'll get George. Emerson's over there. He did it, boys. He did it. Look at him. Oh. <laughs> Your prize, big boy. Something for the little lady. Come on, who's next? Three balls for nine. Come on in, boys. Who's next? Who's the next one? Three for nine. Knock him down. We put him up. You knock him down. Here we go. Here we go. Watch him. Watch him. Here we go. Hi, we get one. Hey. Having fun? Hey, you bet, Doc. Wonderful. I've seen the fertilizers, the farm implements, and the hogs. <laughs> Very interesting, too. Attention, everybody! Attention! Come this way! My dear friend, Mr. Stewart, has a very important announcement to make. Say, Mr. Manning is late. He said he'd be here at three. There's nothing to worry about, Dr. Christian. This Mr. Emerson's a pretty smart fellow. Uh, I'd still like it much better if I knew the outcome of Harvey's analysis. Why don't you get them to postpone the announcement until Mr. Manning comes? I can't do it. Tom's going to try to catch the four o'clock train to Chicago. He's going for the drills and things. Four o'clock train? Yeah. I know you'll all be interested in what he has to say. And after you hear his report, if you would care to participate in this venture, you'll find me waiting right down there. And now, Mr. Emerson. Ah, big hand, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My dear friends, it is with extreme pleasure that I address you happy, happy people. Say, this looks bad, boy. you all. As soon as they get all that money, they'll be getting out of town. You wouldn't say that, Doc, if you knew Tom like I do. When I told him about Mr. Manning, he was very, very happy. You told him? Sure, why not? Now I know something's wrong. Come on, we've got to find Manning. Hurry up! Well, go ahead. Go on. There it is. Oh, it'll take us half an hour to get it out. Come on, Doc. We can take my motorcycle. Well, if I must, I must. Just think what oil is used for. Lighting, heating, cooking, salad dressing. Oil is liquid gold, black gold. The man in the street would be lost without it. The lady in the home finds it almost as necessary as electricity. Yes, sir, folks, oil is absolutely indispensable. And what's more, we can't do without it. <laughs> I'm extremely pleased to announce there is oil in River's End. Is Mr. Manning in? Oh, hello, Dr. Christian. How's the bazaar? Oh, fine, fine, but where's Mr. Manning? Oh, is he? It says room 64. Come on. Excuse me, but I... I was here first. I know that. $2,000 worth. 
come on, get in line, get in line. Where's the chief? The chief? I'm the chief. That is, I'm the acting chief. Somebody's got to send out a broadcast and try and locate Harvey Manning. Broadcast? Yes, it's important. You think you can do it? Me? Oh, broadcast? Why, Doc, you've come to the right man, to the right job, to the right place. Yes, sir. Now, uh, I'll find him for you. Just tell me what he looks like. Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's about five feet six. Five foot six. Uh, Two thousand dollars. I wish I had more. So do I. Seventy-eight dollars. There we are. Now, Doc, I'm going to show you how the police department really works. Uh, wait till I look at these directions. Move plug A down, plug B up. But hurry, Tim, hurry. Sure, Doc, sure, sure. <clears throat> Move dial four to seven, then wait five seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. Now, Doc, we really go to town. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Rivers End Police Department calling. Be on the lookout for Harvey Manning. Five foot six, dark hair, dark glasses, wearing a brown suit. He's uh, carrying a bag, I think. Let's do it. But it's our dowry. It's a great opportunity. We'll make millions. Probably. Oh, but we haven't any money with us anyway. Oh, yes, we have. I took it out of the hiding place this morning. All right. We will. How much? $174.50. Wait a minute, you. Why don't you wait your turn? Yeah, get on the end of the line. Wait just a minute. There you are, Doc. I always get my man. Hello, Doc. Hello, Jack. I arrested a man this morning. He says he knows you. What was he arrested for? He stole my watch. Oh, who'd I know that do such a thing? Well, you know how these crooks are. They get hold of a name in the town and say they know him. Anything for a stall. Yeah. Well, I think I'll take a look at the bazaar. Maybe you'd better try it again, Tim. All right, Doc. Rivers End Police Department calling. Be yeah. on the lookout for Harvey Manning. About 50 years of Say, uh, this man you arrested, what did he look like? He looked like a professor. A funny little guy with glasses, had a bag with... Where is he? In the cell. Well, that's Mr. Manning. I'll vouch for him. Get him out. Harvey! Harvey! Oh! All a mistake, Mr. Open Manning. Open it up. Open it up. Hurry. Did you find anything? A lot of lubricating oil that had been planted. Whoever claims there's oil on that property is a swindler. That land has been salted. You mean there isn't any oil? Are you sure, Mr. Manning? Couldn't you be mistaken? Certainly not. I thought so. Come on, let's go back. Calling all cars, calling all cars, sending out a call for Harvey Manning. Five foot six, wearing glasses and a brown suit, and carrying a bag. Three dollars even. Next. Thank you. How much shall I sell for? You know, after we strike oil. A great deal more than you paid, Mrs. Gattle. A great deal. Next. Really? Next. Next. Step right up here. Wonderful. Pardon me. Oh, Mrs. good afternoon, Mr. Stewart. How do you do? Uh, Mrs. Gertrude and Abby Purdy. And I thought he was my friend. Just a crook, that's all. $174.50. I think it's $147.50. Why, Abby, we counted it three days ago, and that's what it was. I don't think you're right. I'm sure the four comes before the seven. We'll count it now. Two. We had an awful hurry, boys. Everything's under control. Yo, go ahead. Now, wait, wait a minute. There's the guy we got the call about. Listen, everything will be explained later. I'll take the full responsibility. Certainly, Doctor. Give us a hand. Sure, Jack. Four hundred and sixty-five, a hundred and sixty-six and fifty cents. We were both wrong, weren't we, Gertrude? That's all right. That's all right, ladies. Oh, just a moment, Mr. Stewart. Uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions about the shares. Uh, who is the party 
of the second part. I think that's us. Really, ladies, I'm, I'm in an awful hurry. Well, then Mr. Stewart is party of the first part. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? You can keep it with my compliments. Get that bag. It's got the money in it. Did I get my shoulder into that tackle? Roy, the old coach would be proud of you. People of River's End certainly have a lot to thank you for, Doc. I know I appreciate it. Don't thank me. Roy's as much responsible for it as I am. I wish we had more fellows like Roy in River's End. He's just what this town needs. Energetic and enterprising enough to wake it up. Come on, Judy, let's take a look at the exhibits. Oh, I'd love to. Only this time, let's skip the livestock. Where have you been, Doctor? You're holding up the whole works. And you're one of the judges of the vacant contest. Come on, hurt me. Step right in, three, four, nine. Well, here's the big boy once again. The great pitcher, the big shot. Come on, lay him in there, my boy. Lay him right in there. Three for a dime. Help yourself, my friend. One dime. Three for a dime. Take six. Here we go. Shoot off there. Watch that eye. There we go. Watch him. Out. Oh. oh. Don't get excited. Take it easy. And last but not least is the entry of Mrs. Hastings. Come on, Doctor. You're the first taster. I've tasted all the others, and they've all been pretty good. I don't think I'll be a very good judge. Well, let's get it over with. Everybody's waiting. Oh. Say, this is the best one of the lot. It's delicious. What do you think, Doctor? It is good. <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. Take it easy, my boy. A good picture takes it easy and slow. Take your time. Take your time. Always knock those bottles down and get a big prize. <laughs> ah, here we go again. Lay them in there. Quiet, quiet, please. Attention. The judges of this contest have been Dr. Christian and Prudence Penny. Prudence Penny will now award the prize. The winner of this contest is Mrs. Hastings. You? <laughs> Best night? Well, what do you know about that? Come on, let's congratulate Mrs. Hastings. Congratulations, oh, Mrs. Hastings. It was you. wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. I didn't think I'd win it. Really, I didn't. I baked that cake this morning. <laughs> this morning? Oh, the most awful thing happened. When I went into the kitchen, the one I baked yesterday was blown to smithereens. <laughs> I must have used gummy powder instead of baking powder. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I baked another one. So am I. <laughs> oh! Don't get so excited. Take it easy, kid. Take it easy, my boy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Come on, boys. Come on. Knock them down. <laughs> what do you take for this joint? Oh, my goodness. Mrs. Hastings, look. Oh, my cake. That's the second time he's done that to me. <laughs> <laughs>